All right, morning everyone. Back here at Roger's shop. Believe it or not, I'm here before 10 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. What? What happened? I don't know, but I'm, I'm excited, I guess. The 440 did it for me. And looking down the cylinders right now, it actually looks like this one here moved pretty well. Um, unfortunately, that's not the one we were ultra concerned about, though. It was this guy um, that we were hoping to see that Marvell pass down the rings and kind of help break it free. Looks like a little bit drained in this one as well. But yeah, this is the one that's the most full, and unfortunately, that's the one we're most concerned about. So hopefully it did a little something, but if it did not, um, we'll drain this thing out, and we'll try the route with muriatic acid or maybe letting some white vinegar and some of the other things we've seen people have success with and give those a shot because we want to try and preserve not putting the crankshaft inside the engine furnace if we don't have to um, because that extra high heat and exposure would you know potentially um, be compromising to it so we don't want to do that if we don't have this to. bad boy right over here I forget what Roger says this thing cooks up to and we'll ask him when he comes out but this is what you put your engine blocks your heads all your cast iron parts in here that you want to burn off all that old gunked up oil and grease and stuff and it literally just burns it so hot that it flakes off like a campfire and it comes out block looking all kind of rusty and gray and reddish looking, but really it just helps clean up all the old gunk stuck inside the engine in every little crevice and whatever, but it gets so hot, it could be dangerous to uh, potentially damage the crank. Go ahead and flip this bad girl over and let it drain out that Marvell. And then we can start giving it some wax. Should I give her some friendly wax? Yeah. Basically, got to get that one. Yeah, we can out really of there get first. One or two more. I, yeah, I don't think. Uh, I'm pretty sure that one's the one that's locking everybody up. The thing of it is, this one's at, at the bottom of the stroke, mm -hmm. so you can't go either way with it. This one's far enough up the bore, we can probably get a little movement. True. Or even get the crank either. away from it when there's enough distance mm -hmm. off. Exactly. Okay. So it's time to go to Lowe's and buy some acid. Acid trip. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not the kind I'm supposed minute, to be doing. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Don't tell my boss. I was going to say, you better check in with him and let him know what kind of acid you're on. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be back soon, guys. We'll go get some acid and give this a shot. Just got to ask if I work here. I guess my blue Finelli restoration hoodie and the tan pants maybe look at a Lowe's employee. Maybe that's why I like this place so much, it's got our colors. All right, chemicals. This is what we're looking for, let's see here. Got acetone, turpentine, lack of thinner, mineral spirits. We need some muriatic acid though, muriatic. Oh, there it is. Sweet, muriatic acid. I'm glad to see the Craftsman names stay living on here with Lowe's. I don't know if any of you guys remember, maybe, I don't know, 10 years now, back, uh, they used to have Craftsman stuff all at Sears, and then Sears was going down, and I thought Craftsman was gonna go away, but I know, we all like our Craftsman stuff. All right, I've returned with the acid, so the plan is just gonna be break clean out the cylinders. This way, all the Marvell is out of there, and it's clean, bare metal, so we can let that muriatic acid just eat away at the top of the piston and the rings, and hopefully break her free and uh, we'll give it a few hours to marinate like that and cross our fingers. That is what works. If not, Roger said the next step in escalation we can do is actually carefully drill along the inside of the top of the piston, just a bunch of holes around here and basically kind of compromise the strength of the piston, catching the inside of where the rings sit and then we can really uh, you know, surgically kind of remove this so we can try and avoid damaging these cylinder walls because we still have a really good shot at this engine you know, being able to be saved and yeah, you know, we're going to keep it that way. I don't know if it'll cause a dangerous chemical reaction. Maybe it could. I'm not a chemist, but maybe it also might neutralize the muriatic acid. We don't want that either. So either way, we're just going to start on a clean slate here with a clean cylinder wall.
All right, that cylinder is ready to meet its muriatic acid trip. Let's do it. All righty. Seeing an immediate reaction already going on in there. Don't want to breathe that. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna let this sit out here and try not to breathe it in, but yeah, there it is, doing the thing. Hopefully this eats away what we need to at the top of that cylinder wall and the rings, and we can get this thing freed up. All right, about 15 minutes later, you can see this reaction is kind of slowed down and it's starting to get a very like, brownish kind of chocolatey look in there um, it's kind of getting thick and yeah, it's really interesting look and again for safety I'm wearing some gloves I've got iPro on what we're gonna do now is pour in some water and dilute it a little bit and then maybe get the hose and neutralize the rest Ooh, yum. yeah You can definitely see it ate away at the top of the piston. You can see all that kind of pitting in the piston versus the top of this one. Um, hopefully it did a little work on those rings, but I'm not really sure if I'm seeing that it did enough for what we were needing. So we might have to go round two on that one. While we've got our, our magical mystery acid trip going on outside, I'm gonna come over here and strip down the heads. Roger's going ahead and strip down his storm Vulcan because he's gonna try and service the machine head down there. No waste of time. It don't look like that's going to happen. <laughs> well, you got pretty far already. Well, close, but no cigar. Yeah. Don't have to be real hard. Just hit him on the side there. Air powered, and it pushes up this piston, which pushes up on the valve, and then this part here compresses on the spring, and then it gives you the space to get the keepers free, which we just pulled out. And then once you let her go, now your valve spring is free. Roger said hold the phone, I've got an easier way to do it. adjustment you need to put it down a little further you just lift up on this that okay. locks your fine adjustment in okay and when you sort of take it back off you just push down on this a little bit and that'll release it okay thank you happy trails thank you mm -hmm. My foot isn't as calibrated as yours. It'll, it'll get there after another 50 years. <laughs> For those of you at home that are new, here's our valve spring keepers, and these are what keeps the valve spring locked in at the top so it doesn't just pop out. super high amount of air pressure that comes out on top of this machine and this whole bar actually floats above the surface here and it actually lets it all move around like that so it's pretty cool.
see how absolutely weather checked and aged these valve seals are. They just crack and crumble. These used to be pliable, rubbery, you know, rubber. <laughs> and after, who knows, 40 years of being in this car, it's just, they done. Pretty good. Intake valves. Pretty clear. And our exhaust valve is being a little bit more of a pump coming out. All right, and so the reason why a lot of these valves are getting hung up here, you can see they're floating pretty good within the guide, but once it reaches the end here, the top where the keeper goes through, it just doesn't want to pass beyond it. And Roger's saying that happens often from rockers that are out of adjustment, and it kind of mushrooms out the top here of where the keeper goes. So you get a metal file, and we'll file this down, so this way there's enough you know, clearance for this to pass through the keeper. Spin the valve on this side with one hand. Press this down. Okay. Also catch the tip of the valve. Feel it. Hmm. Now look. There it is. <laughs> Feel like that. How's our science project doing out here? I'm not seeing a lot of smoke anymore. Yeah, it looks like the acid is almost completely eaten down to where it's just a big, gross, foamy whatever. So let's neutralize real quick. And we'll dump her out and uh, we'll take a look again. A little water jet action. Alrighty, that's what it looks like. Once again, you can see how much it's eaten the top of that piston. And it definitely looks like it got down a little bit beyond the top of the piston, hopefully into the ring. But we'll know here for sure once we start whacking on it again and see if she doesn't break free. Z1. Yeah, okay. Drill? Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> Drill and blast. All right. Marvell didn't work, transmission fluid, muriatic acid. Big freaking hammer. So now we're taking it up to. And bad words. All yeah, time. bad words too. <laughs> we're taking it up to DEFCON 9. Drilling this son of a bitch.
sure looks cool. Yeah. I don't think this wasn't meant by gas squirting the piston. No. <laughs> You're not supposed to go quite that deep. No. Or large. <laughs> Neither. I made it this far before we busted a drill bit. It's not too bad. It's better than I usually get. Yeah. It's looking looking like an old uh, boiler out of like a locomotive tank or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. A little floor drain in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> You can see too when you're looking at the ridge here on the cylinder you can see that fine ridge right right along here so the piston is just a couple hundreds below where it would be at its top dead center right now but still you could see that's a good chunk away completely coming up to where the piston is nice and flush to the deck surface so it was still way down in the hole from the factory for this engine at least this wasn't a high performance 440. <laughs> dentist's office yeah. to uh, butcher a dentist. Up. The fine tuning never hit nobody. What rings look like when they're stuck. Yeah. This will be on eBay for yeah. $5.95 and you can catch it next Tuesday. Don't forget the tip. <laughs> that is neat. That is cool. There's the aftermath. <laughs> Torque monster for the win. <laughs>
weld it up for many years with the rings up against it. Obviously we're gonna machine this down anyway. I'm pretty sure this was still at a standard bore, but we can get ourselves a measurement here when we actually go down to building the, building the engine. But uh, standard bore for a 440 would be 4.320 and it may still be there. All right, after that exciting power round of piston dental surgery removal, we're back to taking off the rest. And hopefully that's the only one we had to do that to because I think Roger probably doesn't want to have to do that again, but I'm just guessing. Not more than seven times. Yeah. Behaving? Well, one of them. Well, if that doesn't mean business, I don't know what does. <laughs> Glasses on. Just like mm -hmm. gone. Wow. Hastings is not going to warranty then. No, probably not. Well, there's no probably but. <laughs> <laughs> Big no. down the other way. Try and break it free a little more. right where it was holding right against the cylinder wall. Crazy. All right, that's three out. This is what I was looking at with Roger right here. The factory chamfering they did here on the oil, the oiling holes here on the crank. Just look how rugged and rough those are. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, see, we're hanging right there. Oh, on the rod, mm -hmm. catching here. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. Gotta get someone else out so we can rotate the crank. The edge of the rods are chamfered. You see right here. Mm -hmm. This one goes off to the side here. Mm -hmm. This groove oil. holds oil here, and the clamp between it comes slides out through there, goes between the two of them. I'm glad I didn't waste more time at home trying to screw this thing. <laughs> <laughs> God, you would have been halfway to Centerville. Yeah. Every time you whack that, somebody could take off on you. My next next plan would have been to put it back <laughs> in the engine door. So it's like you know, held down yeah. and then put uh, a pulley back on the front of the, you know, the front of the crank and then weld a giant like steel yeah. bar to it and then just like 
pull, you know, with all leverage possible and tip the car over in the yeah, process. I heard the <laughs> saying swinging in the breeze. Yeah. That's the way you'd have been. <laughs> it wouldn't have been moving. No. After seeing all this, no, this would have gone nowhere. Glad I uh, yeah. came to the right place here. what we're looking at here cross bearing still looks really good it's just incredible how clean the majority of the engine is and just how froze those rings got on everything else is really nice Look at these bearings. Pretty nice, all things considered. That's way cool. Friggin' big help. <laughs> <laughs> Just been me thinking about it. No, I saw it. Yeah. I saw the slightest rotation. Huh? Yeah, or that one taps off and see if you can. Yeah, I can't get to the nuts on either side. No. You got a bottom side, you got nuts on that one. So we're trying to get the crank out so this way we can work the last three pistons out without the crank in the way. However, we're kind of hung up with this one rod bolt um, sticking through here, touching on the cranks. We're trying to get it this way, but we can't get it moving yet because we got to get these two caps off first and hopefully we can draw this thing loose and roger just found his magic tool he was looking for Not the one but this might do it anyway yeah <clears throat> there we go the other one yeah the other one magic tool. <laughs> you got the arm strength for it <laughs> <laughs> this is payback for the eight sleeve uh eight sleeve job damn it i shouldn't have let that out what do you mean i put the first one in you only did seven that's true Giving it up. Way too easy. That's okay. We're ready for an easy one. Right, 
rise up a little bit so they don't whack that bowl there. Called this morning, I wonder if I joined them. Uh, a membership, I told them I probably didn't need it. I couldn't understand it. No, not the way you operate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here and see if you can keep up with me for a day, and then, then we'll see it, how it works out. Yeah, exactly. All right, the crank is on the floor. <laughs> that thing stayed in really nice shape. All the main journals are looking really good. Raw journals. This thing should clean up real nice. We've got four pistons out, four to go. Can we do it? That's the question. Piston number five is going to be our final stubborn son of a bitch. Not for long. Heck yeah. I'm going to get the wire brush on the top of that wall. And probably, probably better. That'll help us out a little bit. Certainly won't hurt. Can I have the honors? Try and catch it on the pin bosses. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and knock your freeze plugs out. Take 
that barge slide it through here and whack this cam plug out and all my cam bearings out of it. Okay. I remember now. Last summer. Yep. Bad memories are coming back. Yeah. <laughs> well, that one's a good one. Yeah. Very controversial here also our core plugs coming out aka freeze plugs aka call them what you want but yes core plugs because when they cast these blocks the cast iron and sand cast we got to be able to pour the sand back out and people will like to get all upset that we correct them and say that they're core plugs or casting plugs and not freeze plugs but Think about it. People are like, well, if this engine freezes, the plug's gonna pop out and let you know the engine froze or stop it from freezing. Well, that may be the case if it pops out, but really, water doesn't decide to just freeze right here behind the plug. If the water froze here, it means it froze here and there and there and in the whole engine, and that water expands when it's frozen. So you're probably gonna have a crack somewhere in the engine. And that plug is just basically telling you, your engine is probably screwed up now. Screwed up? Are you offending somebody? Uh, probably hurting some feelings on the old freeze plug, <laughs> core plug debate again. Yeah, yeah. Plug? The, the no plug. Yeah. 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 Still actually in pretty good shape, all things considered. They're not really uh, eating up too bad from the backside, so that's kind of cool. Two others decided to take a dip into the block, but we're getting this one out. They're not staying long. No. Just pass them through. There it is. Yeah. Cool. We can hide the other two. Uh, <laughs> one took a dip inside, I think, this here. one. Oh, you see it? Oh, yeah, there it is. And other side is the other one. Oh, that's a nice piece of cake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. We can do it that way or else we can do it that way. <laughs> do it that way or, or the other way. Right? And look at how good the shape of these are still. These factory original steel core plugs. Not even corroded too bad on the backside. It's because they had so much ick on them they couldn't. <laughs> yeah, they had plenty of old swamp mud in there. Oh, here it is. It's right here. Yeah. Right where we're not looking. Yep. There you go. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, core plugs are removed, and now we can go ahead and punch out the cam bearings, remove the additional plugs around the block, and that's pretty much it. This thing's ready to go into the, the engine furnace and get all these the, the gaskets, all this old engine oil, all this muck inside of the water jackets. That'll get just burnt up and pulverized, and then once we pull it out, we can get this thing cleaned up and put it on the shelf for when the day it's ready to be built. This is the engine I'm gonna be using on my 69 Super V, so we're not building it today but at least we have it ready to go. And this crank we can either use in this engine or might need to donate it for the 70 Super B motor, but we'll find out one way or another. We've got the parts and the things that we need here. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up splitting apart a frozen Seize 440. You guys saw it here, that was pretty cool.
So these plugs will get really kind of stuck in there and hard to get off. So WD-40, whack it hard with the hammer and then heat the thing up nice and hot with the torch and then it came loose nice and easy to go now. So just another little trick from the master himself. Pretty hard to even move before and now. One handed. Nice. You can get that nice crack as it breaks free. A little bit of heat and persuasion can go a long way when taking apart stuff that's been together for 50 years. All right, then the fuel pump push rod pops out nice and easy. And we'll punch out the cam bearings, and this thing is ready for a burning hot bath. How hot does that furnace get, Roger? 700 degrees, that is certainly a baptism by fire. Okay, number one slug devil behind you. Maybe the other ones they've dealt with, except for the one with sleeve. Yeah. Internally, there's not nearly the casting flash left inside of it. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty clean it down there. Like, like they thought they knew what they were doing that day. You might have lucked out with this block after all. Well, it doesn't have a chance. <laughs> nope. Yep. You're welcome. thing on the ground. Heck yeah. Look we'll at the fire pit. Tomorrow I'll warm him up good. <laughs> I like it. Beauty. Yeah. The final bearing. Alright now that is really it. That is a completely stripped down 440 block for you all the bearings everything out of it we'll take out these drain plugs afterwards because the heat will help break those free but other than that she's ready to go off to the fire with you that's right we've had all the air crap we're gonna take it I remember the time I pulled out a fresh load and didn't put the tray underneath it and yeah. almost dropped the block on my foot. Your oh my god light came on, didn't it? Yeah. Sure did. You call me stub. <laughs> All right, the block and both heads are loaded up. 700 degrees, here you come. what Roger is doing is going to surface the top of that, what do you call that block with the rails, Roger? Well, this? Yeah. It's just the bed. I can't, the surfacing machine won't go down far enough to do it on the machine, so I'll probably take it on and have it precision ground. Hmm, okay. And yeah, he was trying to use the machine to machine itself, basically, and just and doesn't quite have the reach. To. <laughs> <laughs> but not for lack of valiant effort. No, okay. That's pretty cool. There's two ways to get the sand block out. Yeah, do a little better than that. 
splitting off these bolts here holding on the flywheel and we can go ahead and get this crank along with the caps and anything else you want to keep over in the hot tank and uh, give it a nice chemical wash and then we can store and wrap this crankshaft for safekeeping until we need it and this thing could very easily be cleaned up and may need a little machining just to clean up the, the journal surfaces a little polishing and she'll be good to go So this is the crank out of that 27 Pierce Arrow, which is absolutely massive. And then you look at the size of the pistons on this thing, the length of those things. Look at the little baby camshaft it had in there. Look at these tiny little lobes. Compare that up against a 440 cam. Kind of cool. Here's what those rings look like on the piston from being froze to that wall. Crazy. This thing's amazing. This is definitely going on the wall at home. Look how nice and clean everything comes out of that bath. It's way cool. All the cleaned up parts torn down, we can go and store these things at home for when we need them. Well, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for you guys. You saw what it was like to take apart a frozen Seize 440 and Roger showed us some really cool tricks on how to drill through that piston and just air chisel it out and just beat the heck out of it. And I've never seen that done before. Many of you probably haven't either, but I'm really glad we got to experience that all together and see it because now we've got this engine block ready to go for when we need to build it, and uh, it was pretty cool. Learned a lot of great things along the way, so thank you guys for joining us.